Okay, so welcome everybody to another uh, exciting Friday. <laughs> I know you are all uh, uh, keen uh, into into the thing. You can't wait for the Friday to come in for this uh, these uh, exciting <laughs> lectures towards the world of uh, quantum hardware. So welcome everybody, those on YouTube as well. Um, uh, sorry for the delay. Uh, so without any further ado, I'll hand over to our good friend Carlos to uh, take you over into the world of uh, quantum hardware. Okay, Carlos, the floor is yours. So I will disappear. Um, thank you. Thank you, Bamborde. Uh, and sorry for the late. I mean, I had internet problems, connection problems today. So that's why I'm late, 20 minutes late today. So sorry about that. And today, I mean, the, the lecture, we like try to finish the this this uh this first part of the course that we want to give like an introduction about the ideas of quantum quantum physics and how these these ideas came to today uh in, in, in when we we make um uh the ideas came to to to, to today i mean to, to make like a, a possible the existence of uh, quantum computers and quantum information. So uh, again, this today I'll give a summary about uh, we finished a, a couple of weeks ago uh, when we talk about uh, the ideas of quantum mechanics and we stop in, in the Schrodinger equation. So today the, my plan is that how to uh, from Schrodinger these ideas came to have the what we call today quantum information or quantum computation things. So, but again, we just a summary. Uh, we just uh, an overview, very short, just to understand a little bit. And in, in next Friday, we will start with the math. Math. Okay. So, so okay. So, uh, I my presentation today we 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 will talk a little bit more about the wave function interpretation and we we talk about the superposition and collapse of the wave function a little bit of uh, quantum paradox and i will stop just to to say some words about the universality of the quantum theory okay and then we talk about Quantum information, quantum computation, especially we see, uh, we'll discuss, in fact, yeah, uh, 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 some one, one very nice uh, experiment related to quantum, quantum information. So, again, we, in the last time, maybe a couple of weeks ago, we stopped here in the Schrodinger equation that was found in 26 by Schrodinger. And with this equation, uh, we, we know we are able to, Schrodinger was able to find, for instance, like the energy of the electron orbit uh, from the Bohr model. Remember, uh, when we talk uh, about the Bohr model, Bohr makes uh, a, a lot of uh, prepositions, a lot of rules that give, he was able to, to evaluate like the, the, the some experimental discovery from the hydrogen atoms. And, but this was like suppositions, I mean, like rules that he defined. He didn't have an explanation for these rules. And he, did, he didn't even have a, like a, an equation to it that, that, that uh, explained that, that the, the results from the, found from the, from the hydrogen atom. And Schrodinger gives with the, his equation, he, he could, uh, without these ad hoc suppositions that Bohr uh, did in uh, 10 years, 15 years before, he was able like, to, to explain the experimental results in the hydrogen atom. And so the general idea about this, 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 this equation is, uh, suppose you have like a potential, time-dependent potential, and you can make like 
you have a differential equation, and with this differential equation, you can use one of the techniques that uh, in the prerequisite series of the course, we find, especially if you can use like separation of variables. I'll not show, I mean, I'll not show here, it's not the, the, the goal in, in, from these lectures now uh, to show details about the, the math part. So just a, a, a brief overview is that we, if we have something like that, we can make like uh, use one of the, the techniques, uh, especially the separation of variables, and we are able like to find the ending values on the equation. I mean, the, depending on the problem, you can have like infinite values for the energy. You can with uh, these ending values, you can find found the ending functions with with this psi. Psi one, psi two, psi three, and with these guys, these both guys, you can find like the corresponding wave function that is kept again. Psi one, psi two, psi three, psi n. It's related like this. This is psi one. This is psi two, psi three, and so on. And in general, you can have like the superposition. The the the. the wave function is a particular function for the, 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 the potential V, in this case, independent of sign. And you can have like each Psi, you can have like a, a, a linear combination with each solution. Okay, so this is general, a general idea. And the thing is the interpretation, the interpretation of the, the, the wave function. So we, 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 we saw like, uh, uh, by that time, I mean, Schrodinger tried to, to give like a, like a material interpretation, let's say like that, a material meaning for the wave function, but a material in the sense that it was a real physical, uh, a real physical uh, device, a real physical subject, like, a, like, for instance, waves in the in the in the lake, but uh, in the same year, I mean, the the, the same period, in twenty six, uh, the the correct interpretation that survives until today was given by Born, Max Born, and he said that psi is not I uh, don't have a material meaning, and it expressed the probability for the electron to be placed in one, in the case of the in the ball, in the ball, in the hydrogen atom, the ball atom, uh, psi just express the probability for the electron be placed in one orbit of the atom or the other. So uh, where in the place where the amplitude of the probability is higher, the is more probable to find the electron. In this case here. So it's uh, the probability to find the electron here, where, where you have a, a higher amplitude, is bigger than to find here. So in this in this sense, like psi doesn't have like a material meaning, but is something some math tools that you can use to have uh, what the physical meaning is the probability that is given by by that. So we, I think in the, the last uh, in the last lecture we, we stopped here uh, discussing these these things. So, but uh, the consequences of this uh, that's the, the the wave function it has something that we call superposition and also one of the consequences is the collapse. So let's try to to understand a little bit with uh, some possible experiments. I don't know if I can take this. Because it's in front of my. No. Do you guys can see this this thing here? Yeah, the overlaid little menu. Yes. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, it's I think you can just scroll. Screen. If you scroll the, uh, the the thing, your slides uh, a little bit uh, down. You scroll. No, I, I think. Okay. Um, ah. No, it's. I don't maybe know it's movable. It. Uh, try to drag it. Try to drag it. Or well, maybe here. Yeah. To see no. whether we can. No. No. 
I can't move. Uh, maybe reduce. Uh, yeah, maybe uh, the just for. Is there an option for presenter view? Uh, yeah, yeah I think that would be on the icon on the on the far left. I think. Left. Yeah, yeah, and what I think is it not? No, I don't think no. so. Or the, f I guess the full the full screen. Yeah, yeah. I try here full screen, but it never disappears. That's very strange. Uh, sorry for that, everyone. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. Maybe yeah, it's so, better. Yeah. No, okay. Just because. Yeah. It's in yeah. front of this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's By the way, right. we're just finding out about uh, this uh, the thing because he needed to the, the pen. So this is a new uh, a new yeah. uh, a new uh, thing that we are a uh, new. And we try to to understand. <laughs> yeah, so it was uh, that's why we started late. So sorry for yeah. it. We'll uh, we'll get familiar with it next uh, by the next session. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so okay, I think you can see you now. Oh, this is just a a, a possible experiment. I mean, schematic. Uh, experiment just to try to understand this these things superpositions and collapse and the idea is is here is, is the following if i have photons that will be sent here in this where is f if i send let's say uh, one photon at once uh, it can come here this is a type of uh, type of mirror that is called blitz spin splitter and in general it it has a uh, 50% of probability that this photon is transmitted and 50% of probability that this photon is uh, reflected in this direction. So transmitted in the horizontal direction or reflected in the vertical direction. Okay, these things here with the E are called mirrors. Okay, it's perfect mirrors, so it's always reflected. And this, uh, I call D0 and this D1 are detectors. So the, the first, I mean, oh, 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 some questions? No? OK, so the first. There's nothing on the chat. OK, so the first uh, like thought experiment that we, we can think is, uh, let's send a, a photon here. I mean, if you can use so a photon here in this. Oh, it's a. I guess it is a question. This fifty percent is important. Question mark. This Do you mean the the beam splitter? What's the? I didn't understand. The question is, this fifty percent is important. Question. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, in this case, yes. I mean, in this case, yes, because I have, I, I want to have the same probability to go to one photon go to the to be transmitted at fifty. The same probability to be uh, reflected. So in this case, yes, it's important. But I mean, it's not always that you can find like beam splitters that uh, we don't have the same probability. But in this case, okay. yes. Okay. In the, in the decades that we discussed today, uh, the beam splitters that we are considering is always like 50%. Half, half, people call. So uh, the photon comes here, and it has the probability to, to be transmitted. Once it is transmitted, it will be here in this mirror, will be reflected, and it will be detected here in the detector 1, D1. And the same probability to come here horizontally, the upside be reflected here and be detected in detector D0. Okay. So uh, it's, it seems like the uh, uh, the photon here works like the, the discussion we have in the in the previous in the in the the last lecture. The 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 photon here works like a, a particle, right? That would be a, uh, be here detected. I mean, if, 
if you do the, this experiment 100 times, so 50, 50, 50 of the times will be detected here, 50 of the times will be detected in D1. Okay? So again, okay. So let's have, repeat this experiment. Now I will put a second B splitter. So in this case, I mean, this uh, is not well done, but this is, it was free here. Now I'll put a second bean splitter, the same thing, 50%, half half bean splitter in this space here. And we try to understand. So this is called the mass and the interferometer. Okay. This apparatus here. So uh, again, let's repeat the experiment. And if you do the same thing, uh, we will, we, will, we will see, I mean, if you, you do the, the, the real experiment in the lab, what we see is that only D0 or oh, D1, in this case, for instance, D0 will click. D1 will never click, only D0. Once you, the only thing we did was put a second bean splitter here. So, Again, I mean, this is unusual because this bean splitter is also a 50% half half like this one, this other one. But what is happening is it's just one of the, the two, in this case, the zero is clicking. So nothing seems to come to here. So uh, the, the explanation for this, for this I mean, experiment, uh, the this experiment was done in here. Is, I forget to put the paper, the reference, but you can find also here in this, in this www thing. So okay. there's, so oh, there's a question from Diego. What exactly happens inside a beam splitter? How does it place the photon in a superposition of being reflected or transmitted. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I'll explain this now. I mean, this is exactly what, what I'm doing now. So uh, what, what, what happened uh, in the second case is that the photons behave like waves. Because the, the explanation is that the wave that arrives uh, in D1, for instance, are phase opposed, phase opposite and can sell out each other. So it's something like the, the wave, like the, the, the crest and the toads uh, what, what was coming here together. And they can sell. I mean, they are phase opposite. And here, it's like the crests are together and the, the intensity is higher. So, uh, uh, the, 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 yeah, from the other hand, the waves in D0 are in phase and increase. Okay. So when they come here, they are in phase. They, when they come here, they are phase opposite. So that's why nothing, nothing happened here in D1. You have no detection. So this is it's the, 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 the explanation from this, from this, what is happening here in these two experiments. I mean, the only thing, the only difference is in the first case, it comes here and 50% of the time it will be detected here, 50% of the time it will be detected here in D0. In the second, the second experiment, I just put a beam splitter here and the waves, the, the, the photons behave like waves and, and it seems like they come from the both direction, bottom and upside. And here they are in phase, here uh, they are in phase opposite. So that's why nothing clicks here, no detection here in this, in this second experiment. Okay, and without the beam splitter, they follow one or the other. So with the, beam, the second beam splitter with this guy, it seems like the photons behave like uh, they are following the both, the both, uh, 
the both ways, I mean, the, the, the bottom and up ways. And here they choose, without the second be, be splitter, they choose. They go on or, or you know, in this direction or the photon go in this other direction. So, but there is another thing. So, it seems that uh, you have this du duality of the, 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 the photons again in this experiment. Sometimes it works like in this case here, like a particle that choose the, 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 the way it, it, it goes, like uh, bottom of upsides, or sometimes if I put the second B splitter, it uh, works like a wave. It's going both direction at the same time. At at, at, at least it, it it works like that. I mean, the the, the experiment shows something like that. There's a couple of questions. Andre says, "Looks like this is not probabilistic behavior." And Mohammad Reza, I hope I pronounced that correctly, asks. What does determine when photons demonstrate a wave or particle behavior? The photon chooses to act one way or the other? Yeah, the photon chooses like the, to, 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 to behave like one way or the other. Yes, exactly. And to, to try to solve this, there is a third experiment. Maybe. Uh, let me show the third experiment and uh, return to the questions. So uh, the third is the following. It was proposed by Wheeler in 1978. And he asked, uh, what happens if we decide to place or not the second bean splitter after, just after the photons had passed the first bean splitter? So the photons behave like waves or like particles. And the thing, basically, the questions that we really want to, to, to show it, when they decide they are wave of particles. So the proposal, the Wheeler proposal in 78 was, imagine the photon is coming here, and just after he passed the first beam splitter, we put the second. So until there, the, we put or not, I mean, you have some, some some circuit, some interferometer that will put the second beam splitter here or not. This is the idea, the thought idea from the from 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 Wheeler. Because we, we, we know in the first case, the photons was waving was behaving like particles. There is no second, there is no beam splitter here in the upside. In the second case, the photons was waving was uh, behaving like uh, waves and there was previously there was a second uh, beam splitter here in the top side in the top and but the wheeler asked okay and if the photon don't know before if we have this this guy here so uh, how it would, would work would uh, behave like a wave or like a particle. So the decision to place the second beam splitter is made randomly after the photons went through the first beam splitter. And the, surprisingly, the experiment was exactly like that. So when the experiment works exactly like before, so when when the photons come here and pass the first beam splitter, randomly the second will be placed here or not. So if it's placed, it will the photon will behave like a wave. If it's not placed, the photon will behave like a particle. So so yeah, you have this this. These things and this, this result, I'm not uh, uh, get into details it, but this result is 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 here in this experiment. Okay. 
I mean, experimental realization of with the delay. I mean, this experiment was done with no, I mean, no <laughs> doubt that it worked like that in 2007. I mean, almost 30, 30 years before. We have like a, a, a technology to, to do the, the, the real suge su suggestion. So uh, let's try to understand what has happened here. So let's see. Yeah. Let's try to understand what happened here. Since we have interference in the end of the interferometer in the, in the second case, the wave function should be something like this. I mean, PC, I'm call, call here PC up and PC down. So the wave function after the photon pass here in the first big splitter, it behaves like it was in superposition. I'm calling, calling PC U, PC D, okay? Thus, the photon wave function after it has passed by the first beam splitter is in superposition state. This is the only way to have interference if we decide to place the second beam splitter. If it's in superposition, the only way to have the interference if the second beam splitter will be placed uh, is if we have something like that. Other way, it's not possible to have interference. So, however, in the end of the circuit, if the second B splitter is not there, what happens? The wave function collapse. So it was this behavior, but it collapsed to one of the one of them. You see up or PC down if the second B splitter is not there. So this is the, the, this is the 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 the, the, the explanation. Right? So. The photon come here, it's in a superposition state. It passed from the first beam splitter. I mean, we can't really measure that he, ca he came in this buff direction, but in the end, we will measure if it's, it's that he, he behaves like a wave or if he, the, the photon behaves like a particle. If it behaves like wave, it's, bec it's because it came in the both direction and the wave function is PC up plus PC down when he passed here. If not, the wave function collapse and we find here or here. Or it came from this direction in the upside or he came in this direction in the bottom side. Okay, so I don't know if I, with this, I could answer the questions because I think it was related. Let's see what exactly happened inside the bean split. It looks like this is not. What does the Termine when photos demonstrate with? Oh, I, I think this, I think I answered the Mohammed, Mohammed Jirza question. Yeah, the photon behaves like uh, the photos is in superposition when they pass the first the first beam splitter. The photons is in superposition when they pass the first beam splitter. It's PC up plus PC down. And so it behaves like a wave. But if the second beam split is not here, so the wave function collapse. You have one or the other. That's the, the behavior. I mean, and this is uh, the what you call like the official quantum mechanic interpretation, which is called like the Copenhagen interpretation. It's stabilizes stabilize a separation between observers, which is the micro microscopic devices, 
and observables. That's the mi mi micro objects. So uh, the observers are our devices. I mean, the, the, the daily devices. I mean, being splitters, mirrors, and all these things. The observables in this case are the photons, the microscopic objects. And this interpretation says that we can only know the microscopic world through our devices or through the manifestation in the microscopic world, I mean, the daily world, right? These manifestations are governed by what's called the complementary principle. So the photons manifest, the complementary principle say that the photons manifest its corpuscular nature in experiments in which it is required to specify, specify its root and its wave nature when the experiments allows it. So when only one bit splitter is placed, as in this case, so the experiment says uh, that the photons must be behave like particles. So behaving like particles need to choose one of the best to go. The second bit splitters, the experiment says that the photons behave like waves. So behaving like waves, it can go probably both ways. So this is the, this is the, what say the, the interpretation, I mean, the Copenhagen, what's called today Copenhagen interpretation. And the measurement thing is so special in quantum mechanics is that there is a postulate to it which we see in the appropriate time. I mean, it's not today, but I mean, when we were discussing the post quantum mechanical postulate, we will see that there is one postulate, especially for the measurement. And maybe the things will be more clear. I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to give here some, some hints, but maybe with the math will be more clear. So I don't know if I answer at least partially, the guy's question. There's a follow up first, thanks. And then the follow up question Can we claim this is not complete because it's explicitly dependent on the microscopic world? Yeah, that's one of the debates since the. the, 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 the who is making the question? This is Mohammed Reza. Oh, so Mohammed Reza, exactly. This is the, 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 the debate since the, 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 the quantum mechanics uh, was developed by Schrodinger. And there was a, the copy, it's called exactly Copenhagen interpretation because there was a group from Niels Bohr that have this, uh, what to call it, the official interpretation from quantum mechanics. And the was opposite to him was people like Einstein, De Broglie, and even Schrodinger didn't like the, 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 the results that his equation was given. They believed that quantum mechanics was an incomplete theory, not wrong because they know about the experiment, but incomplete. They think that probably would, something is missing in the Schrodinger equation that uh, will give uh, deterministic behavior in this case, in this experiment for the photon, because it's not deterministic, right? The things will, the, the, the photon will behave one way or the other way. Uh, it depends if the, 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 the second bin splitter is placed or not, and it's placed or not like randomly. So this was a, 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 a debate, it's a debate about uh, the quantum mechanics interpretation that we have until today, in fact, but I mean, but this is the, the, the official or the usual or the traditional interpretation since then, which is from the, uh, let's say, the Bohr, news Bohr uh, school. Uh, that's why it's called Copenhagen interpretation. News Bohr was Danish and he lives in, in, in Copenhagen, that today there is a, a institution, news boy institution in Copenhagen. And I mean, this is the interpretation so far, but we'll have a, a, a more discussion about the, this today. In the end, I'll, I'll, I'll also 
uh, say some news uh, about about these things. So okay, so this is the I mean this is the the view, the general view of quantum mechanics, the interpretation, the official interpretation. Not say correct, but the more the, the interpretation that we will find in most of the books, quantum mechanics books, okay, even today. Uh, and is the I mean is the when we start the quantum hardware course, when we start the math part, this is the interpretation we will follow. So uh, it's the interpretation we will follow and. And we, we will not have in, in, in this course, in the quantum hardware course, we will not have a discussion about interpretations of quantum mechanics. Maybe you can do this in a different, uh, in a different, uh, not course, but different, uh, a different uh, occasion that you, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will call in the end. So, okay, let's keep going. This is one part. The other part is what we call quantum paradoxes that okay in the in the Mazenda interferometer uh, we will always like consider one photon at once I mean, we send one photon and then the second the third and so on and suppose that, that we have two particles, not one photon, but two, two photons, like another photo experiment. And one of this, the, the, these photons is polarized vertically, I'll call here zero, and the other is polarized horizontally, I'll call one. So this is called a superposition state of the two photons. I can have a superposition state for one photon or for the two photons, the superposition is something like that. I mean, we'll see the bracket notations and we'll, we'll see the math. Don't get, no, don't be worried about the math now, just so to have an, a quick idea. So let's say this in the left here, the photon, let's call photon number one. It can be vertically or it can be horizontally. And the second photon, this one, goes to this, this curve. It is it can be like horizontally or it can be uh, vertically. So uh, it could be zero left photon and one right photon or one the left photon and zero the right photon so no photon has more reason than the other to have one polarization on another the symmetry however there are aren't external agents that force the system to choose so it can in principle it can behave like this this one half here is because of the probability i mean we we, we understand this in, in the future it's probability of 50 percent but okay, it's just a number here, it doesn't matter. So, uh, this state uh, is called entangled state. So the two photons are state. And they are special because when this, this state in superposition collapse, we have one, it could be, maybe it's not a good time to use the pen. But to use the pen. So when the collapse, when, when the, the, the superposition state collapse, I will have all this state, this state, or I'll have the second state, one or the, or the other. Yeah. <laughs> So if I have the this state here that I put this this blue mark, it will behave like that. So it means like if I know the state from the let's say the left left photon, if it's zero, zero is vertical, right? 
So I know the state from the second, from the second photon. It will be in horizontal. So if I measure the first photon, I know immediately the the result from the 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 second photon. So if the I measure this first photon, it is vertically placed. The polarization is vertically placed. Uh, the polarization in the second photon, I know that is horizontally, and this in the same way. It could if the first is in the horizontal polarization, so the second photon will have vertical polarization. Okay, I just need to measure one. I don't need to measure both. If I measure one, the left, let's say, uh, I know the state from the second. So, although we are measuring the polarization of one of the photons, the other acquires a determinate value. So it loses the superposition state. Even they are kilometers away. I mean, even if if I didn't measure the, the second photon, I know the let's say I'm here in Brazil, Bumble Day is in the UK. So if I send one photon, two entangled photons, it, they are in this superposition state. So if I measure one here, I know the second state that you have this. The, 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 that was also in superposition, I mean, it could be one or zero, the second photon. It could be polarized in the horizontal or vertical uh, polarization. I know when Bumble the when I measure here in Brazil, uh, the first photon, let's say that is in, in zero or in vertical, Position the polarization is the vertical. I know that the the photon in the UK where Bumble is will be in the horizontal position. I mean, it will the the, the, the both photons was in superposition state, but now if I measure one here, I know the state in the in the in the in the other place of the the Earth. Doesn't matter how how long, how distance uh, it, it has. So it seems uh, in this case that we can have like instantaneous, uh, instantaneous communication, right? And this is the, the, the what is called it's the idea behind the einstein podolsky rosen paradox was, uh, was, uh, suggested this paradox in 1935. So Einstein believes that the quantum mechanics is how um, one of the one of Freud said, Einstein believes that quantum mechanics was incomplete because it should exist hidden variables that was not present in the theory that solved this puzzle, I mean, this problem. How can I determine can I know the state on the other photon that's kilometers away? Why the 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 wave function from the second photon will collapse uh, just because I measure something here? I mean, in the other side of the of the Earth. So uh, this was the 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 the, the Einstein claim. I mean, the quantum theory is right, but it's an incomplete theory because probably exists something what's called hidden variables that is not present in the theory today. Both from the other side, that was on the, one of the defensors from the Copenhagen interpretation, the, the traditional interpretation, said something like, that two entangled particles should not be considered two separate systems, but one system, one single system that maintains the unity, no matter how far away they are. And was this that Einstein called a spooky action at distance that I think you guys uh, heard about. So Einstein was completely uh, against this 
this uh, this interpretation. But I mean, until today, we are about in the thirties. Uh, this is, was like a, a a debate, a more philosophical debate, and we have no real experiment that show which views uh, was right. The thing is that the quantum theory was working and explaining the experimental, experimental results that we have so far. And the problem is the interpretation, how to interpret these results. So this is the where we were until the 30s. Questions? No, OK. So uh, uh, in, in the 30, 1932, uh, von Neumann set of the mathematical basis of quantum mechanics. Von Neumann, von Neumann like uh, introduced like the, the concept of Hilbert space and and so on and the things that we see in, in, in I mean we start seeing in the next Friday. So uh, these things, yeah, EPR, Einstein, Podolsky, Rosen paradox, the Schrödinger cat that is related with the collapse of the wave function. Uh, they are not two paradoxes, uh, in fact, I mean, uh, because uh, quantum mechanics is a theory that, that's mathematically rigorous, based in a series of postulates that we will discuss in the future. And these postulates cannot, cannot like contradict each other. So what if we call paradoxes is paradoxes uh, like in the light of the common sense, what we see nowadays. But inside the theory, uh, this is not a paradox. The theory, the mathematical formalism, accepts this. It's paradox for our views. I mean, the same something similar happens in the the, the relativity theory that we didn't discuss here. The, the relativity, special general relativity, is based on some postulates, and some, sometimes you see something that's unusual, like the the you guys have probably heard about the twin paradoxes, but in fact, it's not real paradoxes. It's just the thing that the the uh, the time passed differently, depending depending on the, the the velocity of the system, depending on the 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 intensity of the gravity field. I mean, the the mathematical formalism, the theory, uh, accept this. So inside the logic of the theory the relativity or here in quantum mechanics, these are not real paradoxes. It's paradoxes from our point of view, the classical world. I mean, so this doesn't mean, it's important here, this doesn't mean that quantum mechanics is totally correct. Yeah, it can be, something can be missing in the theory. It's but the validation depends on the experiments, which validates in the, in the end, in the end of the day, are the experiments that validates the postulates. Until today, we have no experiment that uh, violate these postulates or the conse consequence of these postulates. Okay. So until today, we know that this mathematical structure here is valid from the quantum mechanic point of view. So okay, okay. So this was the the thing until the thirties that we have. So we have this discussion, very important discussion about Einstein Bohr about the interpretation of quantum mechanics. As I said, like Einstein, even Schrödinger didn't like the way the the Broglie didn't like the way the also Schrödinger the Broglie didn't like the way the quantum mechanics was developing. And the ball was one of the uh, the guys that uh, uh, helped the, to to give this this like traditional the, this official that we call today uh, quantum mechanics is uh, interpretation point of view. Okay, but I mean this is this is like just to 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 say I mean this is just uh, this. Talk of these lectures are just like a few 
a summary of the quantum mechanics things that we are following quantum mechanics has a, more, a lot of more things that we will not discuss today and we will not discuss it during the quantum hardware course. I mean, today I will try to give a summary of this part here relating with quantum information and quantum computation because it's how go. But uh, only to know, I mean, after she ran the equation in the 20s, there was a, a real development in the in, in, one, in this part here that I, I put here in my in my tree, my organogram, like related with quantum electrodynamics, like people was like able to what to call today quantize uh, the classical electrodynamics, that is the, the, the Maxwell electrodynamics from the uh, 19th century. So people was able to quantize this, this interaction, like electromagnetic interaction. People find the different interactions, I mean, experimentally, like the weak and strong interactions, and was able to quantize this, what is called today QCD or quantum chromodynamics. Uh, with these ideas, was possible like to to discover new particles that are all particles that we know today uh, in the standard what's called the standard model. And there is some question marks here related with where we could like use quantum mechanics is used in the for instance here in the primordial universe to explain. Uh, how was the universe after the first, some moments after the Big Bang. And from here, from these interactions here, strong uh, or weak interactions, people try to, to see something beyond the standard model, like maybe some special particles, different particles related with so called supersymmetry. That is a theory that was not confirmed yet. Uh, dark matter, that is uh, very important to, to cosmology. And people know that probably there is, uh, must be uh, a part, type of particles that is not included in the standard model. But uh, we have a lot of candidates, but uh, was not, none of them was confirmed today. And we have like uh, things like uh, different theories because we with quantum mechanics ideas we was able like to to what we call today quantize these interactions electromagnetic weak strong interactions but we are not able to quantize like the QG the general relativity we know that the gravity theory that is the general relativity is incompatible with quantum theory. So one of the questions from today is, what's the, the a quantum gravity theory? And also theories of everything, like the string theory, when we say theories of everything, they quantize the gravity and they include these interactions together. And this is some kind, sometimes it's called theory of everything. But I mean, this is a, a story since the 40s till today, didn't finish related with quantum mechanics in some sense. So we will not see this, we will not discuss about this in this course because, I mean, our interest is in, in quantum information and quantum computation things, okay? But this, I, I put this slide just to, to say that uh, there are much, much more history that we're not considering this, this summary, very, summary of the summary of quantum mechanics. We have questions, comments. No. All quiet on the chat. Okay. Seems though that the questions that we did have cut to the heart of the matter. And I... Yeah, that's. Yeah, he answered, I think some of the questions, looking at them, uh, they're already in between the stuff that he was already going through, I guess. Um, 
yeah, there's something, someone posted something just now. Yeah, it says, if another philosophical interpretation of quantum mechanics prevails someday, should the math be modified necessarily? It could be, it could be, it's not wrong. I mean, in fact, there are more than, I know more than that exists. That I don't know the details, but I know that exists more than 20 different interpretations from quantum mechanics. This is the usual. This one, the Copenhagen is the one that we use, but there are more interpretations. People that will uh, make uh, research about this different type of things. In the end of this lecture, I want to, to, to have make some announcement related with this. Uh, but anyway, let's wait until the end because we have uh, another interesting thing. But yeah, as I mean, the math can, could be, if you find an experiment that uh, violate the, 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 the postulates or the consequence of the postulate of quantum mechanics, that it must be, must be, modified i mean oh you should include something else and you say that the quantum mechanic is is uh, a theory uh, a partial theory from the microscopic world oh yes yes you can have an interpretation but the thing the, the for the different point of views and interpretations we must have in one of the interpretation one result that the Copenhagen interpretation doesn't show you. And if you have some possible experimental interpretation different from the Copenhagen interpretation, and this thing could be made, could be placed in a lab or some observation uh, from, I mean, from cosmological observation, something like that. So, uh, so yes, you, you, you probably should uh, 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 make some modification in the math things. Probably something will be missing, I mean, in the, in the, in the theory, like Einstein was saying before, but, but I mean, uh, this is, we don't know yet. I mean, now I'll have some, some something that uh, in the 60s put some light in the discussion. What is called the Bell inequalities, 1964. Uh, the thing is, uh, the idea is the the the, the because we we have that 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 uh, discussion that debate about Einstein Bohr about the correct interpretation for quantum mechanics. And till there, I mean, it was only like a debate. We have no experiment that showed that one point of view was right uh, and the other point of view was not right. I mean, Einstein believed that what something was missing in the theory. The theory explained the experiment, okay, but he believed that something was missing. Bohr said, no, it's not missing. The theory is right is complete and the world uh, in the atomic world works like that just accept that it's different and in 64 in, unfortunately uh, both Einstein and Bohr was not alive anymore in 60, 64 uh, Einstein uh, died in 55 and Bohr I think he's 62 so both was not alive anymore here. But John Bell, Bell works, uh, is a particle physicist. He works, I think, in CERN in Switzerland. He's Irish. But in the in the in his free time, he, he liked to to make discussion about the quantum mechanics interpretation. And then uh, uh, he was like studying the EPR paradox and he have the idea and uh, this is the summary is here i mean he he, he 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 said that the values of normal or classical quantities 
fulfill a trivial inequality, he finds this. And the result is that the quantum quantities are linked in such a way that they do not fulfill this inequality. And the point is that it's possible to contrast the inequality experimentally, and the discussion between Einstein and Bohr will not longer be a matter of opinions. So this is important. If we want to have a, a different interpretation, we need an experiment in the end of the day to show which interpretation is right or not. Here we will see a summary of uh, a simplified version proposed by Klaus Horn and Shimon in Holt, that is called CHSH, and is present in this paper here. The proposal, okay. So uh, basically, uh, they consider like uh, four quantities, each one associated with a photon polarization. So these quantities I'll call here to simplify four letters, A, B, C, D. And uh, the photon can be decomposed in some type of crystals that you can send a photon. And this photon, the polarization, has, the photon has some polarization, and this polarization can be decomposed. Depends of the uh, internal structure of the crystal. The polarization is, it will be something like, like this, like the horizontal and vertical part. So if the photon is horizontally polarized, uh, these guys, uh, uh, if the photon is horizontally polarized, so the, the quantity A, B, C, O, D assumes the value of plus one. If vertically polarized, A, B, C, O, D assumes the value, the value minus one. So following Einstein, the polarization has always defined values. So for the, the, the so Einstein point of view, the world, the nature, could be uh, deterministic. So the polarization should always have defined values and things like uh, superposition should not be possible. Like something like an entangled state, for instance, which we, we don't see in the, in the, the real world. That was the basic the entangled state for, uh, from, from the, 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 the two photons thing was the base for the, EPA paradox, EPR paradox. So for the Einstein, this was, that thing was uh, uh, absurd, should not happen. So uh, the photon should always have like definite values, or plus one or minus one, should be polarized in the vertical or horizontal. So for some reasons, I mean, we can we can prove that this reason is. is it's true, but I don't want to, to, to take too long I mean, with the calculations here because it's not the, the, the goal. Let's ju just have the try to understand the idea. We can choose that this, this uh, very simple expression here can have like what we call the Bell inequalities that, that Bell, Bell find. And this, could, the, the, this type of inequality uh, should be, this is, is the inequality that will prove that Einstein or Bohr point of view are the right. So uh, because A, B, C, and D are plus one or minus one, I like Einstein believe. So uh, this guy here will be two or minus two, right? If both have the same sign, so this term here will be two. And depending of the sign of B, could be plus or minus, and this will be zero because they have the same sign. If they have the opposite sign, A or C, so this will be zero, and this will have two or minus two, and depending of the, the sign of D, you can have in the end two or minus two. So the absolute value to simplify would be always two. Okay. And you can prove that if you take the average 
And because of this, and the modules, in general, the, the, the module of f plus g is always smaller than f plus the 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 model of the sum is always smaller or equal to the sum of the modules, right? Yeah. If both are one, and this is two, this is two. If they have opposite sign, this is zero, but this is two. Okay, this inequality is right. So Looks it's like a triangle inequality. Yeah, I don't know the. I don't know the 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 right <laughs> the right uh, definition. <laughs> but yeah, that, it, it, that was just a comment that that that's what that inequality is called. I, I didn't. I didn't mean to distract. Sorry. Okay. 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 okay so. So if you take the average, the, uh, in the end, I'll show how to, to will, people did to calculate this. So if I just, just, just take it, this is the average, like the sum of the, the possibilities, the different possibilities divided for the total. But in the end, I show the expression, okay? I forgot to put here. But I mean, this inequality here, if you take the average, like if we, if we repeat the, the 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 experiment many times, the uh, and use these 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 things here, we will find this inequality. So this, if I say is correct, so this inequality is correct. But you can show you can show uh, using quantum mechanics. Uh, the math tools. I mean, and I'm not show here the detail because we didn't we didn't see the the the, the, the math part. So it's only believe me that uh, if we sh if we use the, the the quantum mechanical tools, this inequality here will be violated. So if you use a state like entangled state to the photons, and if we do the same logic here, but that that time using not a de deterministic thing that was did here, but using the logic like in the entangled state, you can show that this is this is inequality is not valid anymore. So we have one we if we are able to make an experiment and test these things here, this inequality here, we could could say that Einstein is correct this if this expression is if we, in the end, if you find an expression like that, and boy is correct if in the end uh, this this uh, this inequality here is violated. If you find something like let's say like uh, uh, bigger than two, bigger than two, yeah. So the violated the the, the the inequality is violated, and this deterministic point of view here. Uh, is not is not valid. So the Einstein view is not valid. So this experiment, actually, this experiment uh, that try this was suggested like in the sixties by Bell was like a thought experiment. They didn't have technology, but that by that time, but he he just showed that it's possible to make an experiment that say that Einstein is correct or Bohr is correct. And then in the 70s, some people did the, did one experiment using these ideas, but people saw that there was some problem in the experiment. So in the 90s, they, they did again with, I mean, with the technology more advanced. But I, what we will show here is an experiment that was did in 2007, because it's special because the distance. Uh, 140, 45 kilometers from distance that we will just 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 to try to to see the 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 idea that opposes the point of view for Einstein and Bohr. So it's the, the 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 if this if this inequality is violated, so the Einstein point of view was the right. If the Bohr, if the 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 if the 
if this inequality is violated, the ball point of view is right. If it's not, the right, the, the Einstein point of view is the correct. So this was did 2007. This but was did before for some 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 other other experiments, but in, in a usual lab, this was a very distance place. They use like uh this is the distance, two islands in the south of Spain, it's La Palma Island and Tenerife Island. So basically, I'll just give a summary here. If you, I don't understand all the details in the experiment, but at least the main idea I'll try to, to, to show you. So basically, they have here in the La Palma Island, they have like a uh, a laser that send a photon. This photon this can be decomposed. I mean, the photon has some polarization. This polarization can be decomposed. Uh, one part come here, and the other part come here. And you can have here in La Palma Island, where is Alice? So the the one photon come here in this direction, and we find here a very similar, uh, uh, a very similar picture that we saw in the, in the beginning. The, I forget the guy's name, imagine me. I forget his name, let's just see again. We have something similar with this, Max Zender interferometer. We have a Max Sender interferometer here, something similar. So if the photon come in this way, it here we have a beam splitter, a half half beam splitter. I think it's not here, but in the in the, in the paper they, they say means fifty percent. Uh, yeah, it's like fifty fifty beam splitter. Fifty fifty. So uh. They can be reflected, or can they can be transmitted the, the the photons? And here we have a have a second mean splitter that can be the photon can be transmitted or reflected. And here are the detectors, and the other can be if it is transmitted here. Again, we have another mean splitter here that can reflect or transmit. In some way, that that's understand. In the same thing in the other island, in Tenerife. If you send a photon, a pair of photons that are entangled, or not, the 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 the, the, the consequences will be will violate or not the the Bell inequality. So the same thing we we have here in the in this station in Tenerife. This is something. Uh, this is something just to, 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 because once the photon travels here, it it will be, uh, be in contact with the, the environment, right? So this is something just to stabilize the sign, something like that. So I will not get into the details here. I, which which I, which I understood was something just to stabilize the sign, the the, the sign. The signal, because the the I mean the, this other photon here it, it, it is it is in contact with the environment in this distance. So let's focus here in the Zen Zender interferometer. So let's see in this case. So in La Palma case, when Alice is placed, the photo came here. It can be transmitted, can be reflected in this direction, and we'll find a second B splitter. It can be reflected in this direction. If this happens, I will call this. I will say that A, that quantity A, is minus one. So if this detector clicks, I will give every time that A is minus one. If uh, this other detector clicks, so if it reflected and is transmitted, 
I'll say that A is plus one. And the same thing here. If it's first transmitted and in the second uh, bean splitter, uh, oh, and this here, this the HWP is something what's called the half wave plate. And the thing is, it's rotate the polarization in 45 degrees. So remember that the, the, these quantities A, B, C associate with A, B, C, D if the polarization of the photon uh, depends on the angle of the polarization the photons are happy. So A is detected here that the photons is in the vertical or in the horizontal. Here, this guy here, what it, 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 it do, it uh, rotates the polarization 45 degrees. And once it did that, I have a different uh, angle of orientation that define my C. So if it's detected here, I call C minus one. If detected here, I'll call it C plus one. So I have two of the, I have two of the, these guys in the inequalities. I have A and C, but it's missing yet uh, B and D. B and D will be measured in the other side, in the other part, in Tenerife. But the thing is that you see there is something here, this uh, what's called polarization compensator, it is rotates the 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 photons that come here it rotates the polarization in about 22 degrees so the where bob is in the tenerife the photons is coming uh with the polarization uh, rotated in 22 degrees so when it comes we'll have again the same uh interferometer as before we have two beam splitters here and one, two beam splitters here. And here the HWP, that's the half, half wave plate that rotate again the polarization in 45 degrees. So that's why we have different. So each quantity has different angle of orientation. B, if detected here, minus one. Or plus one and d if it's detected here plus one minus one so d the orientation is 22 degrees because it comes here with the polarization of 22 degrees plus or minus 45 degrees that is the the what what this guy did here so in the end uh we'll find this following if we put the result here of the things that we measure and you, you, you give the values plus one and minus one to these quantities, we'll find this inequality here will be this value about this value, 2.5. So the inequality is broken. So the, the inequality is broken. So this is the, 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 the experimental result i mean this is the the way i mean it's a, this uh but i call a b c d to be simplified but the way they 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 evaluate this average let's say a and b they use an expression like that so this n is the number of time that a and b are plus one plus the number of time that a and b are minus one minus the subtract here the number of time that uh, a and b uh, have opposite sign a is plus one and b is minus one minus the number of times uh, that a is minus one and b is plus one and divided for all the possibilities so this average the average for a and b and of, of course for c and b will be the same thing but just change.
And the total, when they, they calculate, this is the expression for the, 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 the Bell inequality. But it, what he's calling here, PA, PB, I call just to simplify it, it's like A and B. This would be A and C, I think, because they, they, they put this, this thing here. It's apostrophe, right? And this would be like D and B and he C and B. So it's the, 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 the average, this average here. Okay. okay this, the, the minus is in this case. So uh, this is the result defined. So combining our experimental data, we obtain the value for the, this S, this S is the inequality. The experiment give this 2.5 with the zero. So this is the what, what we when we this is the theoretical result. Remember, I said if you use quantum mechanics tools, formalism, we will not find this is the classical that we we understood. Uh, if you use the quantum mechanical formalism, you'll find something like that. I mean, the theory and the experimental. So it seems that Bohr is right, and it seems that uh, the deterministic world that Einstein was uh, looking for was claiming it doesn't doesn't uh, exist in fact. So, so okay, and these results, I mean, until until the nineties, I, I believe, this was like only like more philosophical discussion. And from the nineties, people um, like Ecker, Bennett, they find a way like to 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 have applications from these ideas. The idea is that people was like Bell, Einstein, Bohr, Schrödinger, Bell, Heisenberg, uh, was like a discussion just like, they, they seems to have no application. People in the 90s start like seeing, uh, yes, applications, different applications that we'll call like today uh, quantum cryptography, Teleportation that experimentally is also possible. I'm not discussing this today because of the time. And until we have like quantum computers. So, yes, in most we have quantum computation, we have all these things and more things like the development of quantum algorithms in the 90s. We have uh, uh, these, the, the, the most famous, but there is much more. Quantum error corrections, also I think in the 90s, and quantum hardware, that is the, the, the subject of our course, that we start discussing the math of quantum mechanics in next week, and then we really start like the, the quantum hardware, into hardware is part. And we will use these things, we will start like optical photonic, optical cavity, quantum electrodynamics, in the first part of the course, and then we'll have another models in the second part, and so on. That we hope to, uh, along with the next year, we we can cover at least most of this this part here. So we have yeah, a very small part of quantum mechanics, but many of the ideas that we discussed here before uh, will be important. Will be important in our course. So uh, next week, we, we finally start the mathematical part, mathematical tools of quantum mechanics. We start uh, like some discussion, basic discussion about the Hilbert space and then the postulates of quantum mechanics and we, we, we start the physical realization. But I mean, so the idea here was give like a, a short overview, a summary, of the, the, the quantum mechanics ideas 
but uh, in context, I mean, we understand why what's happened to have these ideas, the experimental problems and the discussion. But I mean, during this, the during the 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 when preparing these these topics, I was discussing with Bumblebee. I don't know if, he, if he's is there. We was discussing with Bumblebee. Maybe it would not. Yes, be I'm. Good. Yeah, if not be good, Bumblebee, uh, as we are discussing, to have something like a round table about quantum mechanics interpretations. I mean, it's not the close quantum hardware, it's another thing that maybe would be interesting because, I mean, the things I show here was like very short, and maybe you guys have uh, some doubts, and this is the, the uh, one of the goals too. I mean, if the question marks in your minds, but maybe you could like do something if if you guys are interested. Of course, something not uh, to be one thing is the quantum hardware course that we use, like the usual quantum mechanic interpretation, not discuss about interpretation. We just use the tools and the math tools that we need. And we try to what is what is the what is doing be doing uh, uh, what was the, the conditions necessary to 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 build a, a quantum hardware. But I mean because of this discussion here and the thing was very short, I don't know if some of you guys are interested. If so, you could like to, to have something to discuss discussion, something like a discussion section or round table, I don't know how to call. Uh, about quantum mechanics interpretation in these philosophical things. I mean, I don't know exactly how we should proceed yet, but maybe we could like, uh, for instance, like study one paper like that and try to understand these, these the details that I didn't show here, or maybe goals in the past and try to understand more because there's a lot of materials about the, like the Einstein and Bohr debate that I think, at least I think, very interesting. Uh, but if there is some other people interested to to have this this kind of discussion, so I would be glad to be, if some of one guys want me. Bumble there seems to be interested when I talk. De definitely, I think uh, we can actually uh, make it uh, a more broader thing about foundations of physics, <laughs> not just foundations of uh, quantum mechanics that we can, you know have on the side for the wider quantum formalism community, even the ones that are not at the moment taking the uh, the quantum hardware course. Yeah, so it could be very uh, a very interesting thing. Yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, for those taking the quantum hardware, you need to be able to switch from shut up and calculate to... <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Only the mathematical tools to do, <laughs> to, to, to be able to, uh, you know, to see how the framework works, uh, how the, the framework extracts ex experimental results and so on, <laughs> to switch into actually what does it all mean and these type of things, right? So... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how, to, if people are interested, I don't know how to could contact us. It just says, oh, I'm interested. Because we need to see the, the number of people that are really interested. Because if yeah, I, I actually think, yeah, I think we will, we will have interest for sure. Because uh, the people taking this course right now are just a subset, small subset of the, the wider quantum formalism community. And there is a lot of uh, people uh, in like, uh, in physics and other uh, thing, uh, other um branches of science that will definitely be interested yeah so maybe we can just start to have like a, a first session of it we can uh, you and i carlos we can uh, uh, set up a date or something uh, and you know and then we test it out to see how the the first <laughs> round tables <laughs> turns out yeah. and then we take it from there that could be the way <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but it would be nice if people also taking this course here i'm sure quite few of you will be interested in in taking part in uh, you know, uh, not necessarily if you don't want to be part of the roundtable, yeah, that's 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 also, that's that's fine, but you know, just to uh, uh, join the discussion. Yeah, and sometimes, I, sometimes think maybe uh, could invite someone that works with like quantum mechanics. Yeah, like a talk. Yeah. Yeah, like give a talk, and we can have a discussion with this, this yeah. person.
I, mean, I know some yeah. some guys that worked with this. Yeah. Maybe I will stop recording to see if anybody. Do you have okay. anything else to 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 share in terms right. of slides? Carlos? No, 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 no. I mean, okay, so I'll stop recording to see uh, if uh, anyone else has any anything they want to add. Of, uh, and then we take it uh, from there. So yeah, so uh, fantastic again, uh, Carlos. Uh, for those on YouTube, uh, because I'm about to stop recording. You know. And next week, we will catch up on the mathematical stuff. <laughs> so, you know, um, I really encourage you to um, uh, try to take the mathematical part of the course because it's really important. Things like uh, entanglement and these things, you, th there are mathematical reasons behind that. Things like uh, tensor products, <laughs> these things, you will be able to understand it better. I know Carlos done a great, fantastic explaining the the experimental setup and uh, the term, but uh, you know, from a mathematical point of view, as soon as you know the, uh, you know, uh, the mathematical underpinning mathematical notion, which is a tensor product <laughs> behind it, you know, and then mix that with the, the actual framework, the postulate of quantum mechanics, how the the stuff works and this this type of thing, then you will have understanding of of it. If you don't, it will be very hard. Uh, for you to actually um, have a, a, a good understanding of entanglement, which is fundamental, uh, yeah, especially if you want to do quantum algorithms, right? So, you know, so yeah, so I really encourage you, you know, we will start from ba very basics, uh, you know, from, you know, vector spaces, you know, and so on. And quickly, we will uh, pick up the pace to focus on complex vector spaces in this particular case in complex inner product spaces that lead us to uh, Hilbert spaces. So we will try to not spend too much on the mathematics because we can go as, as general as possible and then uh, try to narrow into Hilbert space stuff. But we will try to take uh, um, get you into Hilbert spaces as fast as possible. In particular, get you to the notions that you need for you know following Carlos's uh, course. So that's it from me. I will stop recording now and then uh, we can maybe. Um, enable a uh, discussion at the end here or like opinion or something. Okay, so uh, I'll stop recording.